Recently, we've had a lot of requests to find out more about the carriage works and some of the skills involved. So, what more of a perfect opportunity could this be? Here I am at Rockley, and it's time for me to try my hand at woodwork. Welcome to Working On It. My tutor for today is Simon. Starting as a volunteer behind the bar on the real ale train, a few years ago he decided to join the team here in the carriage works, and since then has gone on to work on a number of projects, including some you may have seen. Today I'm going to be his apprentice and learn some of the skills of the trade, or at least attempt to. Now, if you're watching that and thinking, hmm, there's a certain likeness between those two, you would be spot on. That's because Simon is my dad. In fact, he got me into volunteering when I was 14 here. And then, by a weird turn of events, I got him into volunteering when he watched my videos about the carriage works. And here we are. So, let's crack on. So, Dad. That, that feels weird saying. <laughs> dad. <laughs> so, Dad. Dad. What are we doing today? Well, son. <laughs> We're going to make these. Uh, they're chocks, and these ones are designed for the carriages. Uh, we need a lot of them. We get through them, uh, both here for the ops department and well, and in the carriage shed. And we're going to make it from this wood. And this wood actually came from the permanent way team. So it was a tree that either oh, fell from the down. Line side. Yeah, line side. It was either fell down or it was cut down by them. And then it was sawn up a few months ago using a steam saw at one of our events. Um, but it's perfect wood, it's a nice hard wood that we can use to make these, uh, these chocks. And the interesting thing about this is it's a sort of an exercise in making something that is relatively simple, but you use most of the tools in the machine shop to actually do it. Ideal. Um, so that's what we're going to basically teach you. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's it. So um, we'll start by carrying this piece through to the workshop and then we'll start moving up. Oh no, shall I? Okay, let's go straight to it. Right. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Into the workshop we went, but before we did anything, we went for a quick tour around the machines we'd be using today. No, we'll, we'll leave it this way up. Okay. So, um,. How do we make a chuck? Right. That's so, not supposed to wobble, is it? Uh, it's not been to wobble, and actually that's the first thing you have to do. You have to basically take this very rough sawn wood and turn it into a piece of wood that we can work with. So all the machines we're going to use need a flat surface or wood which has been, been smoothed out. So um, we'll go through the individual machines Super. and then we'll show you how we mark it up and then we'll start. So the first machine we're going to use is this one. This is a planer and it's basically to make a flat surface on a piece of wood. So this is why you have a very flat surface each side. And in the centre here, you have a spinning drum with uh, several, oh, maybe 100 percent very, very sharp little blades on it. It spins around like this, you pass the wood over and it smooths it out. And you keep doing that until you know you've got a flat surface. And these are obviously your reference surfaces to do that. Uh, once we've done that, we can turn it on its edge and we can do the edge and then we've got a 90 degree angle and you absolutely have to start off with that um, before you do anything else uh, because all the other machines need it. We'll then convert it into a thicknesser and basically we'll be using the blade from underneath. So this whole platform lifts up and then we're passing it underneath and that will then change the dimension of the wood and we'll take that down to 90 millimetres which is the width of the wood we want. Okay. Fair enough. So that's, that's the first tool that we use. Um, after that we will then go to the table saw over here. So this is the table saw, and really what you're using this to do is um, basically what we call rip cuts or cross cuts, to dimension the wood down to the sort of uh, closer to where you want it to be. So a rip cut is where you're cutting along the length of the grain, so you'll pass the wood through here, the blade's under here under the blade guard, and you set that uh, dimension up, and you'll get the sort of finished product. Uh, we can also then do cross cuts, so we bring this table up here, and piece of wood is out this way and just move it through and it'll cut it to the, the sort of length you want. When you're doing the rip cuts you're using this, the fence, to actually as your guide 
and then you're keeping the wood against the fence as you go through. Of course, that comes out of the way when you're using the cross cut. So your hands are free. <laughs> your hands are free, yes. And obviously, <laughs> sliced. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it has a guard uh, to remind you that's where the blade is. Uh, I mean, the principal purpose of the guard is to stop something called kickback, which is um, mm. if a piece of wood uh, gets jammed in the wood or sits on the top, it will fly back. At... So it catches it before. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, it basically stops that happening, and that's, that's the point, um, because that's a very, very dangerous part of it. So that's, that's how it's all set up. So that will then sort of reduce it down to uh, something that looks more like something you might buy in a shop, you know, a sort of square piece of wood. And from that, uh, we then go over to the bandsaw. Then the next process is actually cutting the chop shape from the square piece of wood, and we're using the bandsaw to do that, because the one thing you can do on a bandsaw is you can do a curve. Ideal. Um, so then you can get the basic shape to the lines we've marked out, and then after that, we complete it on the sander. So the last stage of the process is then really just completing from the rough cut that you've done over here, and depending on how accurately you do it, Pretty you will have to do this. <laughs> then, then it's sanding just to get that lovely curve on it uh, to the line and finishing the edge, and then you will have a completed... Here's one I made earlier. Yeah, a completed uh, chalk ready for uh, painting. And that's it. That's how, it. How hard could it be? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll certainly find out. Okay, right, right. let's, uh, let's uh, get going. So Excellent. let's get some uh, machinery on and some equipment on and start. Well, with that quick rundown finished, it was time to dive in and begin. Over the next few hours, we would take this raw piece of wood and turn it into a usable chock. As Dad mentioned, our first task would be to take the wood through the planer and take it down to a plank at the required thickness. Simple. Well, for him anyway. So this table is adjustable, you can go up and down, and that basically regulates how much material you take off. So you've got the gauge here and you use yep. this handle. And we've set it so we're going to take about one to two mil off each time. So it's a nice gentle pass, not too much effort uh, in terms of pushing it through. Um, not too much in terms of the, uh, the chip extractors, which are over there. Uh, once we turn this on, it, it's noisy, you won't be able to talk. I'll get um, my earplugs out. Yes, <laughs> put your earplugs in. I'll be wearing a, a mask and everything. So what I'll do is, uh, if I do the sort of first pass and show you how you, you, you go over it, but essentially you're trying to keep an even pressure um, over this so that it just takes out all the ridges and okay. you get a flat sign. And when we get to the other side, we can just turn it, have a look, see how we've done. And of course, we can just test it um, on, this, on this piece here to see how flat it is. So this is the on button here. Yep. That just switches on that blade there. Any problems, you just hit that, cuts it out. So we turn it on, let it run up to speed. Yep. And then we start the pass. You heard it there, it didn't really start cutting until the middle part. Okay. Yep. That's because it's slightly bowed. A couple more passes later, we turned over the log to have a look at the work, and unsurprisingly, it was excellent. Now it was time for my turn. You can't see it on my face, but this took a surprising amount of force. After we looked over my first run, we still had a couple more to do to get the wood down to a nice surface. Once we had finished, before we continued with the next runs on the side, Dad showed me a little secret. Wax. Waxing the tabletops helped the wood travel along the surface, and also helps prevent rust from building up due to the sap in the wood. Whilst doing this, I then discovered a minor flaw I had in the general layout of these videos. It's going to be weird, because at some point normally we go, well, how did you get involved? Well, 
I've got know. to think of a new section for that one. Huh? How do you get involved? Well, my son... What he does, he's got too much time on his hands, he makes these videos. Well, I remember I've been doing the rap for about 10, 12 years. Oh, of course, yeah. Because it really started with taking you and, well, what picking you up you? when you were on the, on the foot plate at about midnight and you couldn't drive. And you said, oh, so Dad, you... why didn't you do the rat? <laughs> Which was oh, a long time fair, ago. Bar and bowling on a rat is good fun. Yes, it's very good fun. Very Never good have fun. any unhappy customers. Everyone's too <laughs> merry. Exactly. Chat That's over. Good. It was time to return to work. We returned the plank to the planer and did a few more passes. The next task was to reduce the thickness of the wood down to exactly 90 millimeters, which it turns out this machine could do rather accurately once set up. We lifted the table we were using out of the way, moved the dust extractor around, gave everything another quick wax, and were ready to go. We've planed that surface and that one, we've made sure that is 90 degrees to that one there, and we can check that by putting that there, and you can see, absolutely, it is 90 degrees, which is perfect. Um, and then what we're going to do is finish the other two surfaces. Right up. Um, so we're going to start by planing this surface here because we've got a bit of width here. Yep. It will go through the planer and we're going to just smooth that one down so it's very similar to the one underneath. So we need to know how thick that is or how deep that is because that's how we're going to set that instrument up there. So if we just get a ruler or a tape measure will do. In millimetres. In mils, yeah. 186. Okay, 186, just check it on another couple of spots. No, oh, no, 187 there. Yeah, and another one. 185. Okay, fine. It's all got so, a very downhill slope. Yes, yeah, so downhill, which is, is, is bound to happen. 186 again. 186. All right, so um, what we need to do, we'll, we'll take, you can take up to six mil off, but we won't do that. We'll, we just take about two or three millimetres at a time. Mm -hmm. So um, 185 was the lowest. So if we go to 185, that'll just get everything to 185 and then we'll go down from there. there. And again, we just want to end up with a flat surface. So if we go to the thicknesser, we're going to move this sort of flat bed up here, bring it up the blade. So we're going to get that gap down to uh, 185. So you just use these machine tools here. Right? It's going down. And go up until that reads 185. Table set, we picked up the log and started feeding it through the machine. Dad would feed him from one end, the rollers would guide it through, and I'd be there to catch it. Once the side was finished, we raised the table up, flipped the log over, and carried on working it through the machine, and eventually we ended up with a square piece of wood measuring 90 millimetres in thickness. Perfect. Now to turn this piece into four chocks. Using some that had already been made, we laid them out to get an idea of where we'd need to cut. We then marked out some lines to divide the wood into smaller, more workable pieces, ready for the next stage. Um, so the next job is to do a cross cut on the uh, table saw. Super. I can see why you volunteer down here. It's a toy box, isn't it? It is. It is absolutely huge fun. Um, well, you didn't know, he started volunteering down here, and then how long did it take you to start building your own garden shed? Uh, not very long. So, uh, garden shed, greenhouse. Green, greenhouse, sorry, greenhouse. Orangery. Orangery? You're going oranges in there, Yes. <laughs> Lemons, actually. Oh, fair enough. Once the saw was set up, we bought the plank in, laid it on the table, and aligned it with the saw blade. Before I started, Dad gave me a quick brief on best practice when using this machine to ensure I ended the day with the same number of fingers I started with. So don't push the wood, push the fence with your hand on the wood, okay? And okay. just like that, with a little help from editing, we now had a few smaller but more manageable pieces of wood. Right, now for another precise part of the job, but this time we couldn't exactly use a machine and had to do it by hand. Brilliant, well done. Uh, so now you've got um, 
two pieces of wood to work from, which are far easier to handle. Now, pick them up with one hand. Yes. Okay. So, um, next process is actually to mark these out. So these are all our templates. Um, they're all marked up for what they are. So there's all sorts of things. So, you know, mark one corridor pattern. So if you're on the inside of mark one carriage, you know it curves. Yeah. That's the curve. Um, these are the chocks. So there's some for locos, which have wider wheels, so it's a, uh, a wider radius. And then the carriage one, I think, is one on the top yellow. left. Yellow one. That's it. Excellent. Template acquired, I began marking out the profiles for each chock so I'd know where to cut at the next stage on the bandsaw. The carriage shop manager Ian, who had been keeping an eye on progress, mercifully suggested that before being let loose with the final piece of wood, I should probably practice with one of the offcuts, which had a surprising history for all of you chocolate fans out there, yeah. myself included. So, would you like to know the origins of this piece of wood? Go on, and what are the origins of this piece of wood? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this basically used to be the door on the Cadbury's factory in Bristol. And when they knocked the factory down... Did it now, did it? It did. It, yeah. Honestly, it did, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and we, we were given the wood. In fact, they tried to sell it to us, and when yeah. the end, we got it for free. And um, basically, you can see the, where the splines went to join the boards together. And they, what were they, four or five metres tall? Yeah, an absolutely huge piece. We built a workbench up there, and we'll show that to you from that wood, but that's actually one of the offcuts. So nice. that's been on the Cadbury's factory for 70, 80 years, probably longer than that, at least 100 years. Lovely tight grain, beautiful wood. But you can so now use this. this. We're now going to cut it up for a bit of cheap entertainment. Yes. Well, not cheap entertainment. This is, this is <laughs> your, it's an offcut. Well, I can safely say I didn't expect that. Ian passed out the template and he drew me a curve to practice with and then a thinner piece of wood to practice on before trying with the big practice piece before going at it for real. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. Just before starting the final piece, I remembered what I was told at the start. It's fine to get close to the line that I'd drawn out. The closer you get, the less sanding you had to do. But if I went over it, the chances are the piece would be scrapped and unceremoniously burned when lighting up the steam locos in the morning. Knowing my luck as a fireman, I would probably be the one burning it to add insult to injury, so naturally I was keen on avoiding that eventuality. Well, on the plus side, I didn't end up creating an expensive fire lighter, so I consider that a bonus. Anyway, off to the sander we went. Dad took the first chock to demonstrate how to use the machine covering himself in dust in the process. While the extractor fans were good, realistically they can't catch everything. Once the first chock had been completed, I grabbed the second and jumped in. Beginning to sand, I had a moment to reflect. It had been a fantastic day, and while we only made a mere chock, I can see that it was a brilliant introduction to the workshop and a good test of my technique or what little I had at the time. I hope I did well, but I can safely say I can see why Dad volunteers here. It was incredibly satisfying to take a raw bit of wood and turn it into something of use, something I'd never done before. I know it's a bit of a cliché video, a father teaching his son a new skill, but I shall admit, it was rather special to me, and one of the most enjoyable shoots Rich and I have done. The team here are incredibly skilled. The rigorous scrutiny they apply to their work here is something that cannot be understated, and it shows every time a coach rolls out of those shutter doors after they've worked on it. Of course, like every job here, the final sign-off for my work would be provided by our carriage shop manager Ian, who turned up just at the right moment. The ultimate accolade. The ultimate accolade. <laughs> That's really good. Well done. Well done. Cracking job. Yeah. Yeah, said. I'm happy. What are we doing? That's absolutely fine. We've made a chart. Oh, just what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go and find a random coach. <laughs> random coach, yeah, just. Go find a random coach on a hill, take the break off and see, see if, it, if it works. Yeah, yeah. Well done, son. Practical Practical that job. <laughs> Can we have a cup of tea? Can we have a cup of tea? Right, yes, it is.
Well, you've done a splendid job, son. Oh, thanks so much for the opportunity. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was just say thanks to Ian, the camera shop manager, yep. because uh, I saw you popping up, not looking nervous, but sort of, it was reassuring that you were there. Keeping an eye. Keeping Absolutely. an eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was your teacher today? He was very good. I met him before, I'm going to be honest. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Call it by. It's been a long time since he's done as he's told. <laughs> How was he as a student? No, he was very was good. He, he actually he, listens, yeah, and he's... He's not surprised well, at that, aren't <laughs> Not at all, no. no. So, what we've done today, is that just a nice kind of gateway into the carriage works? Yeah, it, it's... Um, I use the chop making as a training exercise to... It gives me a really good idea of how people manage with the machines, how they take instruction, um, work safely. Um, because everything you've done today is used um, around for building the, um, the coaches. So, I mean, as you look around you today, um, all the curved pieces around the workshop and out the front there, and there are, I've just worked it out for you, there's, there's over 250 pieces. E each of those pieces, every single one has gone through exactly the same process as you did making a chop. I'm guessing much more finer tolerance. Um, yes, the finish would be a lot finer, but you, I would be perfectly happy having you doing quite a bit of this preparation work oh, uh, prior to um, somebody taking it and putting it on the spindle moulder, which was the only machine we didn't teach you today. It certainly, I have to admit, this is the first proper woodwork I think I've done since school, well. probably. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very enjoyable. I, I can see why you started volunteering here. It's great fun. Well, actually, I mean, it, it, um, it pushes you. You know, the sort of stuff you do as DIY is all usually pretty simple. You come here and you're thrown in. It's kind of like you're thrown in the deep end. You do things which are really quite ambitious and you think, oh, I can't do that. And then you'll have one of the professional carpenters say, yes, you can. They show you, you get on, you do it. And then afterwards you're suddenly thinking, you know, right, I can do it. Um, so, you know, your knowledge and skills just sort of rise very, very rapidly. I mean, I do feel very much like a sort of a 60-year-old apprentice, but um, that's great. Uh, you learn a lot, a huge amount here. Um, I suppose that's why we get into this. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's, it's enormous fun. And actually, the, the size of the projects as well, you know, sort of rebuilding the, the roof of the bullet carriage. Uh, I mean, taking it to bits, which took weeks, and now sort of preparing and, and rebuilding it and being part of that is fantastic. I mean, it's, um, it's a great project to be in. Um, and, you know, you learn, as I say, you learn a lot of processes as you go through it. Um, so, um, and just, just really good fun. And when you see the finished result, you go, wow, I was part of that. I did that. Yeah. that, that when does the coaches good. roll out of it, they do look spectacular. They do, they do. And, you know, when you feel that you've done part of that, even if it's only a small part, you feel very, very proud of it. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Well, I think we'll have to call it that. So, uh, thanks for taking me. It's still weird saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me and thanks for being here. That's all right, son. You've done well. <laughs> You've done very well. <laughs> so, Ian, thanks for having us around. Um, that's that's it for this week, folks. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And it's been years since he's done <laughs> as he's told. <laughs> we'll see you next time. And we'll cut it there. <laughs>